Hello, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to talk about cabbage moths and how to deal with them if they're attacking your brassicas. Stay with me. Well, hello, I'm here by the sea. Good morning, it's April 3rd here in uh, Beautiful spring Nova Scotia, and then today I'm going to find some squash in my tulip garden. Hi, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. I'm going to talk about garlic. So here we are in my garden. These are tree collards or Jersey walking stick, or I'm sure there's other names for them. They're uh, uh, the type of um, collard green that grow quite tall and they're doing pretty good but they are being attacked by white fly or cabbage moths as they're called. If I look a little closer here I can show them to you. Uh, let's see here. Where is one? Uh, where'd they go? Well here's some evidence right here. So here's look on this leaf all this black stuff here that's the, the poop that they leave they leave these little uh, dark brown green black balls they'll leave, they'll leave them all over the place right if we look uh, on this leaf on the back of this leaf there's some there right that's the sign I mean the damage to your plant is a sign but also the poop so if I look a little closer here's a plant here If I zoom this in a bit, you can see those guys. There's one right there. See him? They're very well camouflaged. Uh, here's one over here. I've got a shadow there. See him right there, right next to the pile. There's a pile of poop, and there's a caterpillar right there. All right. Another one down there. Uh, right there. That guy. All right. So they're there. And so looking at my garden. I got a lot of different uh, kinds of plants that they like. I've got these tree collards here. Behind them is kohlrabi. They love kohlrabi. Over here, there's um, red Russian kale or Siberian kale. And uh, over over there, I've got more kale, Scotch curly kale. I've got uh, uh, Brussels sprouts, which they seem to love. Uh, down here, I've got uh, more Brussels sprouts and stuff like that. So a lot of different brassica crops. And uh, the cabbage kale likes all of those things because they're all related to cabbage. They're all in that mustard family. Uh, so, how do I deal with these? If you read a lot about this, you read uh, organic gardening books and uh, uh, search a lot of websites where they talk about this. They always talk about going around and picking them off. Um, I would pick them off if I had like six kale plants, or six broccoli plants, or something like that, but I've got a few dozen. Not only that, but they're kind of hard to see, <laughs> right? Uh, as you notice there, they're extremely well camouflaged. They're really, uh, very well adapted for, for the business that they're in. And uh, uh, not only that, but if you don't treat them, I mean, they're going to they're gonna eat, they're going to go down in your ground, and they're going to make more caterpillars and they're going to set up shop in your area. They're just going to get worse and worse and worse, which is what has happened here. The first two years I had these, I never had them before, but the first two years I had them, I just tried to pick them off and didn't want to use anything. And they just got worse and worse and worse. Um, so this year I said, the heck with it. I'm going to get uh, kind of medieval and, uh, you know, I, I want to stay within practices that are uh, organically acceptable or within the parameters of what is what is organic and so uh, I've I've used a number of different products and they all seem to work um, to varying degrees. I've used um, uh, rotenone. Uh, it was like a white powder. It's based on some root. Uh, I don't know if they actually extract it from a root anymore but the chemical was found in the root. Um, and that works fairly well. It breaks down 
if you, if you put it on your plants, it just breaks down in the sun and the sky and stuff like that. After a few uh, days, it, it breaks down to nothing. Um, the animals eat it, or the insects eat it, and uh, they die, <laughs> which is great. Um, this year, uh, I tried this um, Safer's Endol, which uh, these guys aren't giving me any money. They gave me these for free to try, and I said if it works, I'll talk about it. Um, so uh, this does work. Uh, it's a contact spray, though, so it's more like hunting. You're not, put it, you're not putting out bait for them to eat. Uh, this is based on um, uh, it's a pyrethrin-based uh, insecticidal soap, so it's got a, a poison that's uh, extracted from uh, chrysanthemums. And uh, if you can touch, if it touches them, they'll die. Uh, it's really good. Uh, and it works on a lot of things, uh, you know, it's a sort of, that's why they call it Endol, it's sort of like a broad-based uh, insecticide. So it'll kill anything that's running around on there that you spray. Whatever you spray, if it's an insect, for the most part, it's not going to make it. Um, so, I mean, that's effective and it's, it's satisfying because you get to kill everything. On, on the other hand, you, you, you may be killing other things you don't want to kill. It breaks down quickly in 24 hours or 48 hours, it's, it's broken down to nothing. But still, you're doing your carpet bombing, right? Where you, maybe you want to be a little more uh, precision. So um, anyway, it does work. And if you want the satisfaction of spraying death on your on your problem insects, this will do it. And it lasts a long time. So I got one of this is a one liter container of the concentrate. I have a large guy. I mean, I only use it on things that are being attacked. You don't need it for squash and and tomatoes and things like that. You need this. I, I've only needed this for my brassicas for my. Um, you know, everything in that family, kale, Brussels sprouts, uh, different greens like that. I haven't needed it for, uh, for some reason, the, the, the pests in here don't uh, bother Swiss chard, they don't seem to bother lettuce. Um, but the, certainly uh, the cabbage flies are really bad on the, on the brassicas. Not only that, but I found that the um, this is also good for um, <coughs> um, flea beetles, um, which can be a problem early in the season. They eat the baby plants and really stump them. Anyway, so there's this. I find this good in the early season because you've got a lot of different things, especially those uh, flea beetles. Um, I never had them before garden at this location, but I have them here. This seems to really do a good job. And you go out the time of the day when you, you tend to see them, and uh, it really it really holds them in check. Um, now this product here, uh, BTK Bacillus thuringiensis, it's a uh, it's a bacteria that's uh, natu naturally occurring in nature that just happens to be unbelievably deadly for caterpillars. Uh, kind of like if you were spraying salmonella on everything, um, a really bad strain of salmonella would, you know, kill people. Um, so this is uh, a bacteria that's specific to um, caterpillars. They eat it, it kills them, it doesn't bother anything else, at least that's what they say. Um, and probably the most precision, you know, uh, product you can use because it's aimed at that one family. Uh, I don't think there's any caterpillars that are <laughs> beneficial in your garden, not certainly the ones that are, you know, you're spraying it on the leaves of your plants. So the only things that are going to be killed are the things that are eating the leaves of your plants. And it's good also because you're really, you're setting a trap, right? I mean, if you're using this, you're hunting, you're, you're spraying it, and if you get them, you get them. If you don't get them, they live. Here, you, you're basically putting this on the thing that they're eating, you walk away. Um, and. Uh, I think it's, you, ha you have to use this within, what does it say, 12 hours or something like that? Use within 12 hours of mixing. So even if you leave it, you know, as a mix, it breaks down. So it doesn't last very long. But if they're actively feeding, this is the, the right way to go. And it's recommended that you use this at night because that's when they feed a lot. Uh, I'm going to spray some on today just because I'm doing the video. Um, but it also breaks down on the sun, you know, so it doesn't last very long. But if they're feeding, and they eat this, they get uh, a stomach problem and they die. They, they stop, according to the uh, directions, it says they stop feeding immediately and die uh, shortly thereafter. Um, they die within two to five days. So, and you don't need a lot. So, to make, uh, I've already poured one liter in this. To make one liter, which for you uh, Americans is two of these, <laughs> you know, it's like just slightly close to a quart. Um, or people that are just anti, uh, anti metric. Um, the instructions say you need uh, 30 milliliters for 10 liters of water. I don't need 10 liters 
worth of poison in my garden. I need one liter. One liter will do everything. And you only mix the amount you can use for one application because as the instruction says, you've got to use it all within 12 hours. So you do your cross multiplication with the math and the book learns and all that. And um, that works out to three milliliters for one liter, right? And uh, now I know that uh, uh, a teaspoon is five milliliters. So close enough. I mean, we're not baking a souffle here. Um, so if I go, you know, five, five milliliters or one teaspoon or slightly shy of that with the liter I have, I've already poured in here, uh, I'm going to be good. So, uh, so you get a sense of, I mean, this has, this, this has a hundred milliliters. I'm using five milliliters from a, for an application, right? So that's a lot of applications, right? That's 20 applications for one of these, which will probably do you a couple seasons because there's only a certain time of year the white flies are around. And if you're, you know, let's say like once a month, we give everything a good shot. Anything that's kicking around is gonna get that and die. Maybe twice a month, it really depends. I've only used this twice this year. So this is this jar is going to last me a long. If I'm only using it three times a year, because it seemed to be all it was needed, right? I used I use it and just watch things. And if uh, you know, you pick off the effective. Uh, I use cut and come again. So you pick off the effective leaves, cut cut away the bad parts, and eat them, and just watch the new leaves. And when they start getting attacked, give it another shot. So yeah, just throw this in here. Give it a good shake. Throw it in. It looks like um, chocolate milk, I guess. Don't lick the spoon. Um, is it ain't chocolate milk? Uh, so yeah, mix that up. Put that in your spray jar. And uh, apply it everywhere where you see that poop. <laughs> and you know, even if a plant doesn't have poop, it might have eggs laid on it, so it may have been affected. But you just pop this thing up and spray it on, and uh, they eat it, and uh, problem solved. Uh, for me, that's uh, far more effective uh, when you have a large garden, when you're gardening on a large scale, um, than going around and trying to find every single one and smush it up. It's, it's next to impossible, or certainly very time consuming. Uh, and considering that it's, it's time consuming and not necessarily that effective, so I don't recommend it. Um, I would say go with something like this, or a Rotenone, or um, something like the pyrethin based uh, uh, insecticide and if you've got a real problem with it if you just have a minor problem I would leave it and and I always treat these things I mean I like to let things go a bit I want to attract in the birds and things like that that eat these right um, I don't want me to be the solution to every pest in my garden I'm a permaculture gardener that's the principle I'm trying to adhere to here so I don't want to be doing all the work I want to work with nature so you know, I, I want to leave some on these. I only I only use a product like this when it's getting bad, and it looks like I'm going to lose a lot of leaves, and it, it just looks like it's getting out of control. So, to put it another way, when it looks, I'm trying to cooperate with nature, but when uh, the system's getting out of control and it's not working the way I want it to, um, for this season anyway, it seems to be a particularly bad year for uh, this particular pest. So, I'm going to use this. Um, but for the most part, I don't use it, you know, every week I'm not hammering it with this stuff because I want the pests around, right? Because I want to attract the things that attack the pests to my garden. I want them to set up shop and I want them to just balance each other out. So um, that's my take on that. Anyway, I hope you found that content useful. Um, if you did, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook and check out our podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.